So if that's what we're doing, then all these issues relate to moms, because all issues are mom issues. So when we go in the schools and we see what's happening, I'm telling you, we have moms that will go in and read what their children are being exposed to, and they're being pulled out of school board meetings, sometimes in handcuffs, because they can't read those things there because it's on public TV. This is absurd. Then we see what's happening in Israel or Ukraine or any of the things that are going on across our world that seem to be just completely dysfunctional. But there is an objective. And when you step on the outside and you look in, you will realize that what the main objective is, is to kill God and enslave the people. That's what this is about. They are trying to replace us because we are God-fearing people and they've already put us in the list of old. They, they tote Bibles and they carry guns. Well, God bless America. So, this is the same exact thing, what's happening in our country right now, that happened in Mao's China, Hitler's Germany, and Stalin's Russia. They used children. They weaponized the government. They did everything that's happening right now. So Glenn Beck was at an event a few months ago with us, and he, he said, for those of you who are sitting there and wondering, what would I have done when Hitler was taking over Germany? When people were being taken in the middle of the night and disappearing into camps? What would I have done? And you know what he said? Whatever you're doing right now is what you would have done. Because where we are right now is we are living in Hitler's Germany, Stalin's Russia, and Mao's China, and we have no idea how desperate the situation is. This is our pushback year. If you want to know how to take this back and how to stop this, it's not going to be rioting. We already know that. I was called before the J6 committee. I, Moms for America was one of the five organizations that were part of Stop the Steal. We put all those rallies on. And they didn't want us there. I'm telling you, they are running scared. Because the thing that despots, that dictators, that warlords fear the most is a peasant uprising. And they are seeing one coming right now. We are done. We are done. So we can say we the people, and it can sound like her Bible her hyperbole all day long. But what does we the people really mean? If you want to turn this around, I am begging you. Go register to vote, register everybody in your sphere of influence, and go out and vote. Whether you're voting early, whether you're voting by mail, whether you're voting the day of the election, please. This is our pushback year. And the only way that we are going to win is if we come out in such a huge number that they can't possibly pull enough ballots out of a suitcase to win an election. They can't. 
That is what we need to do. This is our voice. This is our power. And that's what Moms for America is focused on this year. The vast majority of conservative women of faith are not voting. Most aren't registered to vote. What you saw in 2021 when Youngkin was elected is what happens when they do. So let's talk to moms about the things that care they care about. Let's get them mobilized. It's all about their children. We have to start with their children. You do not stand between a mama bear and her baby cubs. That is a dangerous place to be. So if you want to win your neighbors, I'm going to ask you to do something, okay? I love the flag. I literally tear up every time we pledge it. When the national anthem plays, I'm moved by emotion. I have so many stars in my house, my kids are always in a competition to count just how many there are. I, my front room looks like an explosion of 1776 and my ringtone is only in America. But I'm telling you, if we're going to win this, we have to put it all away. Go where they are and bring them where we need them to be. Be a neighbor, be a friend, be a family member, and pull them in because they are hungry for truth and freedom courses through our veins. And when they start to feel that freedom being taken away, they will rise up and they will stand with us. That is what we need to do. I know it's hard. It's hard to step back and say, but I love my country and I'm proud of that flag. I am too. I am too. But when the, when the country was burning in 2020, our vice president lives just outside of Chicago. And after they got done, those, those not nose kids from the suburbs got done going in and burning down the minority communities in the, in the city. And then they went back home. They decided they were going to start coming to the suburbs. And they were putting it out all over the Twitter feeds. We're going, to, we're going to go out to the suburbs. And the people were asking, well, how do we know which houses to target? And they said, well, look for the flags. If they have flags on their house, they're probably Trump supporters. Go after them. And her 15-year-old son came to her and said, Mom, should we take down the flag? And her mom said, no, we are absolutely not going to take down that flag. We have to stand on principle. We have to stand on truth. We have to stand unwavering. But when we are going out and talking to our neighbors and our friends, regardless of whether or not you support Trump, God bless him, we endorse him. <laughs> you have got to put it all away. Just be a neighbor and a friend. Talk about their children, what they're being faced with. If they're on the border and they're being affected by that, talk about the things they care about. All moms care about the same three things. First and foremost, the safety and protection of their children. Second, they want to get a good education. And third, opportunities to succeed. All three are being taken away by the things happening in this country. We are in the middle of a mom-led revolution. And I'm telling you, those mamas are going to save this country. And, and we have a whole new generation that's coming up. Do you know this? I'm Gen X. You guys, probably a lot of you out there, Gen X. We sat in the back of the station wagon when we stayed out till the lights came on and when we were thirsty we drank out of the hose. Well, we're the ones that had Gen Y. Don't know why, no. So, there was a lot of stuff that went on during that. But they have been slowly indoctrinating our children. Along comes Gen Z and they're looking around going, something's weird's going on. We're not exactly sure what it is, but they're hungry for truth. They're looking for common sense and they definitely want freedom. Well, they are now raising the alpha generation. And they're the ones that are going to save us. But we have to lay the groundwork for them. We've got to tell the story of America. We love it. Share it. Those are the things that are going to save this country. This is our pushback here. It starts by being with our own heart, knowing the Constitution, sharing the story of America, being that influence within our sphere of influence, being the friend and the neighbor, and getting people out to vote. This is our year, so let's go out and do it. What brings you out here? Uh, this uh, kind of a patriotic, yeah. you know, to, to uh, you know, improve our border situation. Uh, we're, we're We've there. got um, human trafficking that's going on. We've got cartels. We don't know who these people well, are. Well, I tried to call you know, both we, of you and either one of I mean, you answer your phone. They're welcome to come here, but they need to come legally. 
so I mean, that there's not, not children, children coming home on the border, they're being sex trafficked. I mean, it is terrible. And yeah, um, I have a, a white some footage of uh, some groups of people on wants. this side of the border, and they're starving and they're freezing. And so that's that's not right. Are you from Arizona? No, I'm from Washington State. From Washington Usually State. Usually we sell in Washington and Oregon and Northern California. I left the military a long time ago, but I still feel that. I'm still here serving and protecting. Yes. So all of us, all of us need, all of us here, we can make a difference. But I want to take a selfie with a lot of ticked off people. And I want to send this because I want Donald Trump's feed and everybody. And I want, I see this long line of caravan down here. So, on the count of three, I want to hear, let's go, Brandon, or whatever you want to do. One, two, three. Let's go, Brandon! All right, now let's do a video. One, two, three. Let's go, Brandon! All right, all right. All right, those are my people out there. I love it. Thank you very much. Who here is upset? Yes! We're upset. Why are we upset? Because of Brandon. I love it. I am so upset that we gave up and we let that clown into the White House. And exactly. But he's there. We got to get him out. I don't hide from Donald Trump. I get attacked because of my support for Donald Trump. And putting this on social media is going to be wonderful. People, these woke people are going to melt. And I love it. I love you. I love everything that you're doing. You see little four-year-olds come through that border, that smell of semen, that have been brutally raped by the cartel. They're evil thugs. As far as I'm concerned, they need to be removed from the planet. Uh, yeah, so I, I came here from uh, Salt Lake and I drove down to um, see what's going on uh, here at the border for first hand. I heard about it on uh, X a few weeks, oh, a week ago actually, and I decided to come down and see uh, what's going on and what, uh, uh, what the rally would be like and meet all the people that are here. Because ultimately at the end of the day we have a huge problem with fighting. Uh, it's not really Joe Biden, it's the globalists and uh, they're you know, the country is fundamentally occupied, and we need to uni unify as much as we can across uh, different political boundaries. Otherwise, we won't have a, a country or an identity. So that's why I'm here to uh, um, try to meet people and uh, show my support for trying to preserve the American way of life, basically. And then, in your like, to you, what do you think states could be doing differently right now during this time? To help with it? Well, I think. Uh, they, they definitely need to start right on the border, start. probably start enforcing the border more with uh, the resources they have. I also think states need to be I'm more antagonistic towards the federal government um, in a lot of different aspects. Uh, one example would be like, um, we should have, at the state legislator level, we should have, uh, we should pass laws that make it illegal for federal agents to carry firearms within the state under act of um, color of law. At the end of the day, we're an occupied nation at this point. And, um, if we don't fix that, then we're going to have a lot of problems in this country. So that's, you know, we want to do it peacefully, uh, and that's why I'm here to just be a part of that. Uh, show my support. I'm nobody important. I'm just the guy that came and wanted to show his support and do something other than be on a computer and type it away. So that's why I'm here. Uh, we are out here to make sure that the Biden administration and the entire cabal know that moms want the border secure. Mothers and children are the first line of defense for anything coming across that border. And mothers and children on both sides of the borders are the biggest victims. And I'm tired of what's happening with these women being exposed, being raped. The rape trees, the children coming across, being tattooed and over and over again in these fake families to put in these sex trafficking. I just, it just has to stop. It's mothers and children are being victimized. Our whole family is, our whole American family is, is under attack. 
it is an invasion. I will continue to call it that. And we've got to make sure that our borders are secure. Is there anything you feel states could be doing differently right now? Yeah, I think that should be a lot of states that are there, the sanctuary cities, the sanctuary states, they need to start not only respecting but enforcing our laws. And they're, they're not. They're, they're making all this about politics. And this isn't a political issue. This is a sovereignty issue. This is a freedom issue. And, you know, all those people that are coming across the border looking for a better life, they're never going to have it. Because they'll never, they'll never be able to have the American dream. Because they'll always be living in fear. They'll always be wondering when somebody's going to call them. They're always going to be taken advantage of. And I've talked to moms who've been in that situation. I've talked to moms who, who have had their children taken from them. Women who have been trafficked. I mean, these are real stories of real people, and they're and they're ignoring it. And all of these states, they're, we're all a border state now. So all of those states need to recognize that if we're not protecting the borders here, we're not protecting our country anywhere. What are you out here for today? I'm here to support the convoy. I'm here to uh, link up with, as you're seeing behind me, all the Californians who are coming. Uh, I came with the uh, contingent from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. I moved out here, or I moved out to Phoenix a year ago from Cali, but it's cool to uh, link up with all these people mm -hmm. uh, for a good cause. What What is that cause? What's the purpose uh, of all this? Opposing the invasion of our country. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's really hard to see this many people show up despite the uh, the fear and the disorganization the right wing has had after January 6th. It's, uh, I mean, we're seeing thousands of cars uh, converging here, also in, uh, in Dripping Springs, Texas, Eagle Pass. It's uh, something I've been looking forward to for a long time. You yeah. know, it feels like the kickoff for uh, the campaign year. Mm -hmm. So I think this is, uh, I think the turnout Tonight was going to be a bellwether for what the, uh, the the momentum would be like this year in 24, and I think it's uh, it's definitely not disappointing for sure. And then, what's kind of your political stance? I'm a nationalist. I want to mm -hmm. put Americans first. I want to put the nation first. And I think, as a nationalist, I understand uh, a nation is defined by its people, and we can't just bring in millions of people without any kind of vetting, without any kind of uh, assimilation. We're seeing the effects of it with the way our country is going. And it's heartening to see people from all walks of life and all backgrounds uh, coming together to defend our country against this existential threat. And then just one last question. How do you feel states should be managing this? What do you think they should be doing? Well, I think uh, in times of invasion, in times of crisis, all Americans have an obligation, be it the individual, uh, a state, or the federal government to oppose it. And we're in a very unique situation. I can't think of many times in history where a, a government has intentionally facilitated the, uh, the breaching of its borders. And I think uh, at the end of the day, instead of this being a question of constitution and law, I think this is more of a question of survival. It's like, do we want to survive this century or do we want to be just another country that has uh, 
fallen like uh, we see throughout the history books. And I think the response here today is we all want to see this country continue to survive and thrive. So I'm loving what Texas is doing and I'm even more uh, loving how it's inspired other states to uh, take a stand as well. Hopefully this will uh, set the momentum for the rest of the year and we'll continue to uh, push back against the federal government. As you might have noticed, the other people from California, the other convoy from California has arrived. So did you guys have fun in San Cedro, California? Yeah. Fantastic. What brings you guys out here today? Well, um, we're just a couple patriots that want to support, you know, America and, and all the, you know, like, stand up against the corruption, especially the border. Like, I never got to see it firsthand, really, because I'm from Nebraska. And so um, I came down here to camp with her, and then all this was happening, and so we thought we'd check it out. Are you from Arizona? I am, from Tucson. So it's hitting us pretty hard over there right now. What do you feel that states could be doing differently right now? Oh, exactly what Texas is doing. Call in the National Guard, let the Patriots go, and protect our, our land. It's what needs to be allowed to happen. Without fear of repercussion, without fear of the next January 6th, right. without fear of any of that, we have a right to defend our land. What do you guys kind of think the next step in this whole situation is? Honestly, I think we're really close to a civil war in this country. I think um, people need to stop being so like complacent and also stop being so afraid of what people think of you and speak up. You know, I've noticed there's not very many younger people here, and that's scary and sad. And so, um, yeah, hopefully, just like the young people wake up some more. Not everything's racist, not everything's and like bigoted, not everything's like, not everybody's like a victim of whatever, like, it's ridiculous, so and they need to just like, to be good stewards of this I don't know, wake nation. up, you know? What do we need to do? And then just anything else you guys would like to say or share, yeah. let people know? I mean, pray for America, we, yeah, pray for our country, because we, also need to be we are very much on a verge right, right now, something very serious, we and we need vote, everybody and we need to, to get together integrity. and take our country Amen. back. Yep, get right with Jesus, get right with God, and start loving yourself and America.